seat of groom takes in the heart of Queensland's Darling Downs, one of Australia's richest and most diverse agricultural regions. It's also one of the safest coalition seats in the country, held by Garth Hamilton by a margin of around 20%. But there's a growing dissatisfaction with the status quo. The biggest one, without a doubt, is that they actually want someone who represents our region, not just the party. They want someone who they can talk to, who has values, who can listen to the people and take to Canberra those issues. Would anyone like to nominate for the position of secretary? Susie Holt started the group Voices of Groom, hoping to shake things up at the next federal election. And it's already gaining community support. I think people are tired because we've got no other option but to vote for the Liberal Party. People were really frustrated. The Voices groups are modelled off a campaign that started in the regional Victorian electorate of Indi, but unseated a safe Liberal seat held by 10%. So right across Australia there's this sense of dissatisfaction and people, particularly in safe seats, are going, it doesn't work, you've got to be in a marginal seat. And the, the sense of optimism that we actually might get a better political system with more independence and particularly for the regions, when we see government letting us down all the time. The movement is spreading across the country, with more than 30 voices groups already preparing for the next federal election. But they have an uphill battle, with just six independent and minor party members elected to the House of Representatives at the last federal election. It was optimism over experience, I think, when we first started. I didn't think we'd win, because we were a country versus of our Liberal Party, the city with its money and its power and its resources, and if anything, the Liberal Party's a winning machine. But we hope to make the seat marginal. And, and that's what we did. With the majority of voices groups in coalition held seats, Liberal Senator Andrew Bragg is issuing a warning to voters. An independent member can't be a member of the government. That is a fact. Uh, and so if people uh, want to see particular uh, initiatives, whether they be policy initiatives or local initiatives pursued, uh, then they need to have a member in their area that is a member of the government. Now, in the case of Warringah, uh, that area doesn't have a member of the government and therefore uh, you know, that area um, I don't think has benefited as much as it could have. Senior Government Minister Angus Taylor is also being targeted by the independents, despite holding his seat by a 13% margin. This diverse electorate spans from the outskirts of Sydney to the regional centre of Goulburn and has been held by the coalition since 1974. Mr Taylor's represented us, the Liberal Party has represented us for eons almost, and people are looking for something different, somebody that represents them better. People are seeing that Mr Taylor, like the rest of his party and the Labor Party, I guess, they all vote along political lines. While Angus Taylor says he welcomes any challenge from independent candidates, Penny Ackery has been organising and recruiting in preparation for a tough campaign. I do believe the margin can be made up. There is really no alternative to Mr Taylor at the moment. Voices of Hume, like Voices of Indi, Voices of Indi had to start small, Voices of Hume started small. Voices of Hume over the last 12 months has really grown. They already have 500 members and plan to choose their candidate in the next few months. And I think whoever is the independent candidate will have a strong campaign behind them, which will make a difference. And I think it is somebody to be reckoned with. This month, Liberal Senator Andrew Bragg wrote to the Australian Electoral Commission asking them to investigate the groups, which he accuses of failing to comply with electoral laws. We want to have clean and fair elections in Australia. We don't want to see people hiding behind the shadows of, uh, of groups uh, that are not transparent. The AEC says it regularly corresponds with people and entities regarding authorisation requirements and any financial disclosure obligations, saying this form of communication is always the first action should it be required. Both Voices of Hume and Voices of Groom have welcomed the call, saying they haven't done anything wrong and were in favour of more transparency. But as they ramp up for the election, they'll have a tough fight on their hands. Clearly, not all of them are going to be able to put together a sophisticated campaign of the level that's needed to beat an incumbent. People are actually seeing that if you've got an independent 
in Parliament, they take your issues to Parliament and they speak about climate change, they speak about energy, they speak about we need an ICAC because we've got too much corruption going on. So I think people are taking enormous courage and see the opportunity. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.